I'll try to present our findings uh, from the paper focused on optimized production uh, technology or OPT. And this was based on a case study within a rubber steel production uh, factory. And we tried to implement the SDBR method, which stands for simplified drum and uh, drum buffer and uh, drum buffer, sorry, I lost it. Uh, simplify drum buffer and rope, okay? Uh, the content of our presentation will be, I would say, pretty standard for scientific papers, so I'll briefly focus on introduction, then I will talk about methods, about our results, what we find out, about discussions, how to fit our results within other research, and then what we believe, uh, what we think, based uh, on, on our research. Uh, once again, my name is Michal Menšík. Uh, the paper is presented by me, but I was not the only author of the paper. The other and the leading author of the paper is Stefan Kolumber, who is unfortunately not here because some other obligations he, he has. So go straight to the point. The OPT or optimized production uh, technology is uh, knowledge which started in 70s, 80s as a software product. And it, was, it has been uh, hugely popular, popular in 80s and 90s based on what is called so-called a business novel. And it was based on theory of uh, constraint. The basic idea behind the theory of constraint is what is described by an old saying which says the, the link is only as strong as its weakest chain, uh, pardon, I'm, I'm sorry, the chain is only as strong as its weakest link. And the idea behind the theory of constraint is that the optimal production for the whole manufacturing site is not created by the optimal or maximal production of each production site, but it's led, it's driven by the slowest, the, the, the production site with the uh, smallest capacity. You can imagine this as traveling within a convoy. The, the speed of convoy is derived by the maximum speed of the slowest car. Then we can move on uh, within, within a convoy. So this, this idea stands behind the theory of constraint. And what we tried to, to research was what if we developed the model of the simplified drum ba uh, base rope, drum buffer rope uh, model, and how to measure the effect and the, the uh, impact of, of, of this model applied in a rubber uh, seal production uh, company. Just to get any numbers, the rubber seal production company was about 181 at that time, 81 employees, and the uh, turnover of uh, that company was around 35 millions of euro per year. So this is, this is our basic introduction. And uh, the research question is, how to implement the SDBR model and what will be the outcomes, what will be the measurable outcomes of, of the SDBR. Uh, methods. Uh, the basic method of our paper was a case study. So we deeply study uh, the company and the area which we were really focused on were the areas covered by the ISO standards the ISO of quality management, environmental management, and health and safety management. Uh, we uh, conducted research interviews during the year, and these research interviews were conducted within two weeks, and these two weeks were separated each from uh, other for six months. So basically, twice a year we visited the company and we conducted a series of interviews each interview was about 45 minutes and the respondent was usually someone from top management and sometimes 
complemented or complied with, with the mid or first line management. And uh, these interviews, it was really intensive uh, interview. So these interviews continue for the whole week. And at the end of each week, we had like 45, 50, 50 interviews, okay? These interviews ba were based on prepared questions or set of questions. Sometimes these questions were multiple choice. Sometimes these were open questions. Sometimes we moved from, from structured research interview to more open when we, when we find out some, I would say, interesting or, or more complicated problem. But basically it was based on, on the research interview. All these research interviews were recorded in prepared protocols so we can gather the information after the, after the week so, so we can proceed on with uh, our research. Uh, we observed uh, certain metrics to, to measure the impact of the SDBR implementation in the factory. The first metric was the wo working time fund. At the beginning, uh, the company was using the standard seven and a half hour shift. The half an hour was for lunch, of course. And uh, the level of how good this seven and a half hour shift is used, how much time is really used for productive activities, this was set as 100%. Okay. Second metric which we focused on was the employee fluctuation, how, how stable and how, how uh, predictable the basic uh, set of, of employees uh, was measured. And again, the, the standard level at the beginning of our research was set for 100%. Third metric which we observed was uh, unused costs Unused costs are the cost which have been expensed, which has been spent, but not uh, in effective way. They did not bring back some value added in, in production or, or, or similar. And again, the entry level of unused cost was defined as 100%. And the last but not least metric was the labor productivity. And the labor productivity was the amount of activities fulfilled by the employees before the implementation of the SDBR. And again, this was set as, as 100% uh, as the basic level. Then we derived the model, model of the SDBR. And uh, as I mentioned, as the SDBR is based on the uh, theory of constraint, then the bottleneck, the, the biggest problem of the theory of constraint was, uh, was, was here. So any other machine, any other production site shouldn't be producing with a faster pace than the bottleneck. Everyone in this scheme should be linked to the bottleneck and the pace, the speed of production has to be tied. That's why it's called drum buffer rope, has to be tied with the bottleneck. What if not? Then of course, uh, if the others are producing more than the bottleneck is capable uh, to, to handle, then there is a significant rise within inventories and inventories are no value added. It's just money waiting or material waiting or unfinished uh, production waiting until it can be finished. So it's non-productive time. What happens if the others are producing less than, uh, than the bottleneck. Then, of course, uh, the total output of the whole company cannot be higher than the bottleneck and it's suboptimal. That's why the theory of constraints insists on tying all the production with uh, the bottleneck. What are the results? After the application of, of the SDBR, we find out that the work taking time found has to be modified or has been modified. Uh, as we observed the, the production, we find out that each day around 8 o'clock in the morning and around the noon, 
there is something. It's probably more biological or anthropological. This was not the case of our research. But we found out that at these times, the production was more problematic, to say. The, the rate of scrap uh, rise, the lead times were uh, higher, so they were, they were slower. And all, all at the end, the production was not at the optimum uh, rate. So we, uh, we decide uh, to, to implement uh, two breaks at these times just to have a small consultation or short uh, refreshment, whatever, just to break the pattern of, of the Labor Day. And despite actually working less, this helped. So the total production was not decreased by that. Okay. By optimizing the production, we also find out that uh, we needed only 50% of, of the employees. So the employees were transferred from the rubber production site to other parts of the company. The production didn't decrease, so it led to the possibility to increase the wages. Okay? By decreasing uh, the, the employees by one half, we can almost double the, the wages. The, the company decided to increase the wages by 75%. Uh, so what was the, the outcome from the perspective of employees? They were working six and a half hours per shift, so they were working less, but all of their time was more productive, and they received the pay rise for 75%. This probably, we believe, this led to a huge stabilization of uh, people in, in, the, in this site. If we took the entry level of fluctuation as 100%, then after the implementation uh, of, of uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I marked the wrong number. After, after the, uh, the implementation, the, the fluctuation dropped from 14% to 17%. Okay, so it was like half of the initial level. The metrics of unused cost decreased from the initial level of 100% to 27 or 32. It depended which production site, but basically this drop is really significant. The, the de decrease of unused cost is, is tremendous. So we can say that the effectivity of using technologies, of using uh, spaces, of using these fixed costs or capacity costs hugely improved, which is not only about the money, but it's about also about the, the, the waste management. It's also about ecology. If you have some technology and you are using it, there is some impact, for example, on environment, etc., etc. And the last but not least result was a labor productivity. It increased from approximately 65% at the, at the beginning to 85 or 92. Again, this varies for different production sites. And I would especially draw your attention here. Uh, when we find out this 92%, we were really, really surprised because this is almost too good to be true, to be, to be precise. These numbers are, are, are suspicious in, 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 in the real business life, but we double checked and yes, it seems like it's correct. It not, was not for the whole production, but at least at some eras of production, this was, uh, this was achieved. What, uh, we, what is our discussion? Uh, of course, based on these results and based on the feedback from the company, we believe that the implementation of the SDBR model was successful in, in, this, uh, in this case. And even though that the theory of constraint and the SDBR is actually quite old and quite well-researched topic, it seems like first, it is still valid. Second, the research is still going on, as you can see on, on, on the, this slide. And most, but not, uh, not least, the importance of optimized production technology uh, probably 
is now uh, the importance is growing. Why we do believe that? Uh, we do believe that because uh, the the optimized production is not optimized only from perspective of of money, from perspective of finance. Yes, of course, return on investment, economic value added, turnover of the assets. All these metrics are important and we, we, we cannot neglect them. But also the optimized means optimized from energy consumption, optimized from scrap material, optimized from the waste water, uh, optimized from the perspective of uh, treating the employees. And all these impacts, we believe, will be more and more important in, in the future. Uh, our conclusion is that even though that the research is case study, which means it's limited and focused only on one company, uh, we still believe that there are some outcomes which can be transferred outside the company. First, uh, these outcomes, these results can be uh, used as benchmarking for other companies. And second, of course, the knowledge gained during, during this, uh, this, this uh, implementation of the SDBR can be transferred to other companies as an experience or proof of concept or best practice. Uh, I prepared some bibliography, but as we are running out of time, I won't spend time on that. Uh, thank you for your attention. This was our presentation of optimized production uh, technology. And now I would like to uh, thank you for being uh, here with us for the afternoon session of the International Day of Science.